So the title of this message is called Peace Within the Storm. Thank you, Dad, for helping me with the title. <laughs> yeah, Mom and I are very similar. We are really hit or miss with the titles. <laughs> so it was pretty awesome to see all the testimonies and how a majority of them were about the peace of God, which was awesome. So... How many of you know what this is? Yeah. I knew you would. <laughs> right up Bill's alley. Tornado alley. Yes. Oh my gosh. Am I going to get through this or what? <laughs> Hall was a soybean farmer in McKinnett, Texas. One spring afternoon in 1951, Hall and his family were outside when a nasty storm approached. He sent his wife and kids inside to hide under the bed, but stayed to watch the coming storm. He claims to have seen green sheets of rain just before the tornado formed. After baseball-sized hail started coming down, he went inside. He then heard a loud rumbling, followed by complete silence. The walls began to shake, and to his surprise, his roof was ripped away and thrown into the woods nearby. At this point, he looked up to find the tornado directly overhead. He described the inside as a smooth wall of clouds with smaller twist, uh, twisters swirling around the inside before breaking free. Once again... Non-stop lighting created a blush light, enabling him to see everything clearly. And then, just like that, the tornado passed and the sky turned sunny. There's only two people on record that claim to have been to the center of a tornado and lived. Not surprising, both of them were fine, farmers, right. being uh, their location. Now, did you know... The most peace peaceful part of a tornado is the eye of the tornado. Yeah. Yeah. So do you remember last week when Dr. John <laughs> had talked about Noah and he was in a storm? Noah was in a storm 40 days, 40 nights, being in a boat with a bunch of animals, having to rely on God for steering. The best way that I could describe that experience that we could somehow relate is imagine being on a cruise, a really nice cruise. Well, maybe not even really nice. Imagine all the animals on the cruise. It shouldn't be that nice. But being on a cruise, right? You're on a cruise, but guess what? No one's driving the boat. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What now? <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, but they said carnival cruise. Just saying. (laughs) It's a fact. (laughs) But let me tell you about another group of people who are in the midst of a storm, and these guys were with Jesus himself. I have to go back. (laughs) Yeah, don't rock the boat. We already got that, okay? Mark, this story is talked about in Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 40. On the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now, when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And then a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. (laughs) He was asleep in a storm. He was asleep in a storm. The boat's rocking, the winds are blowing, lightning, thunder, you imagine, Jesus. <laughs> but no, he was asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said 
to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? I'm so, you guys should be very grateful I was not Jesus. I would have had a completely different reaction. So, then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Peace, be still. If you have your Bibles with me, you can go ahead and turn to Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7. Otherwise, I'll read it right here. New King James Version says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The complete Jewish Bible. That's the second one right here. Don't worry about anything. On the contrary, make your request known to God by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. Then God's shalom, passing all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe in union with the Messiah, Yeshua. So before we go any further, let's go back one. Okay. Before we go any further, let's talk about the word peace or shalom. Yes, I know shalom is also used as a greeting in Hebrew, as does peace on occasion. Peace. Peace. (laughs) Just just kidding. (laughs) Now it's deuces. Uh, (laughs) However, shalom is not just a greeting. It's as if they're praying a quick blessing at the same time. Peace in English is freedom from disturbance, quiet and tranquility. Okay, sure. I go to the beach, I feel peace, quiet and tranquility. Actually, I really need that. Let's set up a date. (laughs) But according to Strong's Concordance, shalom means completeness, wholeness, health, peace, welfare, safety, uh, soundness, tranquility, prosperity, perfectness, fullness, rest, harmony, the absence of agitation or discord. Shalom comes from the root verb shalom, meaning complete, perfect, and full. So why am I talking about peace today? So yeah, we, have a, we have a lot of trials too. Um, So when my mother had asked me to minister today, obviously I didn't know what to minister right away. But as the weeks were going on, I went, oh, okay. So I I heard God say, you know, you need a minister of peace. I'm like, okay, I can do that. No problem. No problem. (laughs) No problem. Oh, girl. (laughs) So this was about peace. This was maybe three weeks ago, okay? So I was like, okay, peace, no problem. Then in the last week and a half, oh, my Lord, did we have to remind ourselves about shalom, peace. As some of you know, Andrew and I are in process to buy our first home. So thank you. So we're on the hunt. We are looking for houses. And of course, in the world of today, there's a lot of paperwork required. Um, and everything. Now, we thought we had everything squared away, but you know how sometimes when you experience your own storm, so to speak, you kind of see, okay, if it goes this way, great. If it goes this way, we need to be ready, right? We had no warning. (laughs) There was no warning as to the unexpected thing that had happened. It was a a complete and utter shock that we were not expecting by any means. To this day, we're still like, what happened? (laughs) How? What? I mean, it was 
utter shock. We just, it was, it, it, our minds are still a bit blown by it. But those type of issues that came up, though, my gosh, did it feel like a storm. I mean, it really felt like a storm. It didn't detour us from having peace about the ultimate goal and vision that we had for our family, for the house we want, for the finances that we, ha we had in mind. There was no fear, no stress, no nothing. Though we weren't happy about the storm, our peace was steadfast on both of us. In fact, I remember Andrew, to uh, to after we got off a phone call, he said, honey, I can't describe it but I have so much peace. I mean, that scripture says, the scripture says, uh, your peace, which surpasses all understanding. He didn't know why, because it surpassed all understanding, but he had the peace. I had the peace. So, one of my favorite versions, of course, is the mirror, yes. <laughs> which, oh, it's just pure poetry. Philippians 4, 6 through 7, the mirror version. Let no anxiety about anything distract you. Rather, translate moments into prayerful worship and soak your requests in gratitude before God. Soak, I like that word. And in this place of worship and gratitude, you will witness how the peace of God within you echoes the awareness of your oneness in Christ Jesus beyond the reach of any thought that could possibly unsettle you. Just like the sentry guard secures a city watching out in advance of the first signs of any possible threat, your heart's deepest feelings and the tranquility of your thoughts are fully guarded there. Oh, that's peace. That is peace. So... Well, yeah, let's do that anyway. Shalom, or complete peace, is almost indescribable. It's a place of trust and faith that everything will be okay. And that because we are one with God, shalom, or peace, exists within us. Regardless what the circumstances of the surroundings look like, we can be in the eye of the storm or surrounded by chaos, but be in complete stillness. And soon the storm will lift and we see bright skies again. So, by the way, I, I, did, I, I briefly spoke to my dad before uh, uh, putting the message together, and you're right, everywhere that it said perfect peace, it was shalom, 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 shalom. So it's peace, but greater than peace. Shalom, shalom, perfect peace. I mean, how many of us have been in that situation where we are in the middle of a storm, our own storm, whether it be work, <laughs> whether it be family, friends, finances, Wendy, I'm going to call you out. You're the perfect example of someone who, you've, you've been in a couple storms and you're just like, I have peace about it. I know God's going to take care of me. You are like the perfect example. You want no peace, no her. <laughs> Amen. See, it's the Jesus within her that's reflecting, right? Because you are the mirror image of God, right? Amen. So God's perfect peace. Lori, you said you were at peace, and it was indescribable, and you had goosebumps. <laughs> Isn't that feeling the best feeling in the world that nothing Absolutely nothing can get in the way of your peace because that's who you are. The key to knowing this stuff about peace, first of all, I, let me clarify or state something. Knowing peace is a practice. 
okay? It, it's not just, oh, I have peace today. <laughs> I wish it were that easy, but it's a practice. Why is it a practice? Because you need to know yourself first. Once you know who you are in God, you are able to receive that complete peace because your eyes are no longer closed to the peace that you have. So you don't need to experience stress, anxiety, and otherwise that goes along with that storm. You don't need to be in the storm. You can be in the center of the storm and completely still. Amen? So how do we remain in complete peace? How do we remain in complete peace? I'll tell you. <laughs> Isaiah 26, 3, 4, you will keep in, excuse me, you will keep in peace, peace, <laughs> those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. I love that. For the Lord, the Lord himself. <laughs> it's letting you know. The, it didn't even say it once. Trust in the Lord forever uh, because he's the rock. No, the Lord himself. <laughs> We're making it clear that the Lord himself, because you trust in him, you will have perfect peace. So I I'm, can pretty much guarantee that everyone who came up here and talked about peace and that perfect peace that surpasses all understanding trusted in God, yeah. right? We trust in God because God has our best interest at heart. When, when you live for God and you love God, God's not going to let you fall. You may have trials and tribulations, but the last thing he wants is to go, hey, thanks for accepting me into your heart. Good luck. <laughs> that doesn't happen. God's not like that. He doesn't do that. He doesn't wish you luck. Go on your way. Got your soul. You got your heaven card. You're done. That's not how God works. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Seriously. But instead, instead, he will always have your best interests at heart. And he doesn't want you to go through stress or difficulties, uh, 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 emotional difficulties. He wants you to remain in perfect peace knowing God's got me, I got God, we're good. And that's it. So Heavenly Father, I thank you for every person here. Every person who might be in a storm right now, Lord God. Every person who has come through a storm, Father God. Every, every person who will encounter a storm in their future, Lord God, that they will experience shalom, shalom, peace, peace, perfect peace that surpasses all understanding, that there's no way to describe it except you, except that you got us through. I thank you, Lord, for everyone on live stream right now who may be experiencing a storm right now, that instead they will just stand steadfast on your word and knowing who they are in you, that they remember that they are a child of God and one with God and that nothing, nothing can stop them because God lives within, a, within them. God, I thank you. I thank you for the breakthroughs that are happening in the Oasis and our extended family, Lord God. I thank you that the breakthroughs continue to happen. And God, I thank you along with the, with the breakthroughs, the, the testimony of, hey, I had this breakthrough, but you know what? I was at peace the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, God. I thank you for your perfect peace. I thank you that it continue to flow through everyone. And I thank you that you are who you are, so we are who we are. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Yeah.